Greetings, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name's Troy. I'm a former fat guy sharing my story with the hopes that it might help somebody else. If it helps one person, it was worth it. If you're new to the channel and you haven't done so yet, what I ask is that you take a second to smash that subscribe button. Doesn't cost you a thing, but it really means the world to me. So in this video, let's talk a little bit about fat loss, how to go about doing that, some potential uh, pitfalls or common uh, rookie mistakes, right, that we all make when we're, uh, when we're trying to work through some of the challenges that we face on our fat loss journey. Number one, lack of motivation. And before we go any further on that, guys, I just want you to consider the fact that for some of us, motivation and relying on that, it just doesn't work, right? Because we don't always have it. You're not always going to feel great. You're not always going to feel like going and doing the thing that you need to do. But the invitation is to just consider doing it anyways. Because for me, the best motivation is momentum, right? Just doing it, right? Like brushing your teeth. You brush your teeth every single day. And if you don't do it, it feels a little weird, right? And that's because you have momentum built up. You always do this thing. So get your wellness practice, whatever that is. If it's doing, you know, some push-ups or sit-ups before bed or when you wake up, or if it's going to the gym or if it's taking a walk every day, try to get that thing ingrained into your programming, just like brushing your teeth so that you do it every day, no matter how you feel. You feel like crap, you still do this thing because it's what you do. Make that thing a part of yourself. Do it when you feel crappy. It's, it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a slog sometimes. Just make sure you always do it to the point where when you don't do it, then it feels off. It feels weird. And when you can get to that point, I feel like it really makes a big difference on your journey. So consider that, guys. Motivation is bull spit. <laughs> okay, next. Unrealistic expectations in terms of time frames. It makes us quit, right? Because here we are, we eat perfectly for one day. We wake up the next day and, uh, you know, <laughs> and the spare tire and, and the belly fat rolls, are, they're not gone yet. What's going on here? I did everything perfect for a day. I should, be, I should be getting rewarded with results by now. But guys, it doesn't work like that, right? In terms of time frames, you need to do something for like three days for it to even really, for you to even really be able to see if it's having an effect or not. After three days, sometimes it can get a little bit easier. But in terms of seeing changes with your body, we're talking more along the lines of like six weeks, right? And then oftentimes things change and you need to be flexible and you need to make changes and adjust because you hit plateaus. Your body changes, everything changes over time. But we need to be realistic in terms of time frames, guys, because I feel like we want it now. And, uh, and you, can, you can go about working towards it right now and you should you should start doing that yesterday but just be realistic in terms of when you expect to see changes in your body it takes a while so be kind to yourself in that regard it'll help you stay the course look for something on the progress that you like something about the thing that you're doing that's uncomfortable something about that thing you have to actually like it. Maybe it's the, the way you feel after you've completed the task. Maybe it's something about the task itself, right? Maybe you see, you see girls at the gym and that's nice. Or maybe on your walk, you get to look around at the various houses and the landscaping and stuff in the neighborhood. There has to be something about the thing that you like. Next, emotional eating. Now this content is mostly for men and men um, I feel like are sometimes resistant to the idea of, you know, we have emotions and our emotions can sometimes affect our decisions. And the invitation is to consider the fact that our emotions can be tied to our dietary choices sometimes. And when we're feeling stressed or any other, um, when we're feeling tired, when we're feeling angry, upset, whatever it is, um, I feel like sometimes we can eat to soothe or sort of as an outlet uh, some of these emotions and it's a good it's a good technique don't get me wrong of getting into the body as an outlet for sometimes um, intense emotions but when we do that through food 
we open ourselves up to <laughs> consequences in our physique. And also when we eat some of, the, some of these foods, I think that we tend to eat when we're emotional eating are trigger foods. They're very loud foods, right? They have um, the various salts and fats and the high palatability. Many of them have been processed and they're presented in such a way as to make them irresistible. And it's very hard to stop, right? So it messes up our um, willpower to make good food choices once some of these trigger foods come into our life. And I feel like emotional eating ties in there, guys. So just consider that. Finally, your support system, or think of it in terms of your environment, can make all the difference in the world. I feel like uh, the battle to make good food choices really needs to be fought in the grocery store. What I find for me is that if I have it in the house, I'm gonna eat it. In those, like I said, in those emotional eating times, yeah, sure, you know, I emotionally eat. Happens to me, but it's much harder for it to happen if it's not in the environment, if I don't have it in the house. The battle for your physique begins in the grocery store. You gotta make good choices there. Don't tell yourself that, well, you know, I'm feeling good right now about my willpower. I'm just going to get this thing. And then you're setting yourself up for failure if you have it in your environment. Also, the people in your life, right? They can sometimes make it hard on you. So in terms of your support system, that includes the people who are around you. And if your wife is supportive of the fact that you're trying to make some changes, then it might be a good idea to have a conversation about the types of things that may be triggers for you that someone who is supportive of your success, they would, they would help to curate your environment in such a way so as those triggers wouldn't be around and they definitely wouldn't be presenting them to you. But it's all something to consider. I'd never tell you how to think or what to think. This is just a conversation. I'd love to hear what's going well for you in the comments and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.